Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to some Toronto Raptors preseason basketball. Yes, Toronto Raptors basketball is back. They've played two games now over in Tokyo, and a couple of the, the games have been super early in the morning, so I don't know if everyone has been able to, to catch the games, but, you know, there's certainly been a lot of highlights out and a lot of talk around, you know, the early overreactions to these couple games. So I'm going to get into all that right now. Now I want to preface everything, everything that I say. Two preseason games usually aren't the best indicator for what's going to happen during the season, but you can certainly see some new added skills that some players are playing with, and you know, it'll be interesting to see if they follow through throughout the regular season. The first guy we got to talk about is Norman Powell, because he's a guy that's been in and out of the rotation for almost his whole Toronto Raptors career, and he's been a guy that a lot of people, especially when he was a rookie in second year, wanted to see have a bigger opportunity. And you know, every time he got a chance to go out there on the court, he'd impress. You know, playoff Norm, he was a guy that was a legend in Toronto. He honestly saved us. He Norm is probably the reason we've had this great stretch of run because Norman Powell was the guy that saved us in that uh, in that series against the Indiana Pacers when in 2016, when that was the we the Toronto Raptors hadn't won a playoff series since you know the early 2000s up until that point. And it was looking pretty bad. Game five, the series tied 2-2. It was on our home court, and we were down by 10 points to the Indiana Pacers, and if we lost that game, we probably would have lost the series. Norman Powell, in a move of desperation, got subbed into the game and shut down Paul George, got a bunch of buckets. It was really, really exciting to see. Fans that watch that will never forget that moment. And, you know, in the next next year, he didn't get much run throughout the regular season, but against the Milwaukee Bucks, he was on fire from three and really played really well. So Norman Powell had some up and down stretches, and even against the Bucks in this finals run, he didn't get much run throughout the whole playoffs, but looked like, honestly, the second coming of Michael Jordan <laughs> during the Eastern Conference Finals. So, you know, there's been a lot of highs with Norman Powell, but then we've also seen a lot of lows because... You know, he's a guy that's been given opportunities after his playoff performances and all that to be a starter, to get some integrated minutes in the rotation, but consistently lost his spot to OG, to DeLon Wright, you know, to the other backup guards. And, you know, he's just had a really up and down career. And I think a lot of that has to do with confidence on the basketball court because Norman Powell, he's explosive. He has a handle to match his explosiveness. You know, when he's going, he can really finish around the rim. He can dunk. He can rise up or finish, you know, with crazy layups. He can knock down the three. You know, he shot, I think, over 40% from three last season. So Norman Powell's a guy with all the intangibles to be a really great player in the league, probably a guy that can start. You know, in his rookie season, a lot of people were comparing him to Dwayne Wade. That's probably not going to happen, but... I think with Norm's skill set, there's no reason he can't be one of the better wing players in the NBA. But the thing that always holds Norman back is when he gets thrown in the game, it looks like he's forcing his game too much. And some people might argue that's because of inconsistent minutes from the coaching staff. But when even when he's been giving consistent minutes, he'll make drives that are, are extremely rushed because there's nothing wrong with going fast and hard to the rim. But when they're rushed, that's when it's really difficult to, to finish them, whether you're an explosive quick guy or, you know, one of the slower players in the league. You can't rush your takes. And even though he can go to the rim under control at a high speed, he just goes in rushed a lot of times. Then he ends up blowing some easy layups. You know, we see him almost pass up some of the open threes that he gets when he's on the court because I and it's it's kind of jarring to watch because we know he's such a good shooter in terms of percentages and then you know he'll get the ball on the wing occasionally he'll hook up some kind of ugly one so Norman Powell's game on paper it's it's really encouraging but then when you see it kind of thrown into live action it's occasionally perplexing as a as a viewer so that's why I think has been holding Norman back throughout, you know, the the past few seasons from really taking the leap to a consistent starter to a borderline, you know, top tier scorer on this team. I know it's a huge tangent from this game reaction or these couple games reaction, but the reason I wanted to get into all that is because in these two preseason games, and yes, it's only a, it's an extremely small sample size, but we saw a bit more flashes of it last year, especially in the playoffs, but Norm looks more confident than ever. He's out there on the court, he's shooting open threes at the right times, you know, he's taking the right shots, and yes, occasionally he dry, he's been driving in and getting stripped and, you know, forcing it a little bit, but he's going to the rim under control. You know, it's not rushed plays. He's going, he's finishing, and we already know what he can do on the defensive end. So, if Norman Powell can play like this, play with this mindset throughout the whole regular season, you know, he's getting, he's been the starting two guard in this preseason, and maybe that's, that's what he needs to play. I've been harping on the fact that Norman Powell needs to play the two guard position for him to be successful on this Toronto Raptors team. I've been saying that for ever since we started the podcast, because 
Norm is a guy that needs the ball in his hands. He's not going to be able to execute as an off-ball player. Yes, he can be a spot-up shooter with his percentages, but I think that's when Norman Powell's confidence is kind of out of it because he's not been touching the ball. He's not been really able to do things with it. So being able to play that two-guard position in more of a scoring role, I think Norm's going to be able to thrive this season because, you know, we've seen him on the court having to share the court a lot with DeMar DeRozan in early seasons when with the Toronto Raptors, and obviously DeMar DeRozan's a better player than Norman Powell right now, and especially during that time. So DeMar was going to get more of the touches, and Norm was going to play off the ball. That's just how it was going to be, and Norm struggled to play off the ball on a consistent basis. And then last season, when he ran the two with Kawhi, even though Norm was the, the secondary ball handler in terms of playing shooting guard, Kawhi was the guy with the ball in his hands most often, and I just don't think that's the natural position for Norm, because even when he's playing with those types of players in the playoffs, it's usually because all the defense is locked in on Kawhi or DeMar DeRozan, and then Norm gets a chance to really free flow with the ball and be aggressive and attack. That's when he really is strong. I think that's why his playoff performance is better than his regular season performance in past years, because he's getting more of an opportunity to play on the ball, and you know he's given that up. Nick Nurse is giving him that chance this season, and in the preseason, we've seen a lot of great things from it. So that's my six-minute rant on Norm. Norman Powell, I think there's going to be a big year for him coming up, and you know maybe I'm overreacting to a couple preseason games. Let me know in the comment section below. But there's a few other things we got to talk about, a few other storylines, and before we get into any of the other players, the defense. We're going to talk about the defense as a whole first. It looks not good. Obviously, we're playing one of the best offenses of all time in the Houston Rockets, and I'm sure they're even going to be better with uh, Russell Westbrook on this team. I know a lot of people aren't big fans of Westbrook, but it's undeniable that he's a great offensive player, even though he shoots a lot of threes, and him and James Harden look dynamic, so maybe that's a part of the reason the defense looks bad, but in these first two preseason games, it looks the defense looks horrible, regardless of if we were playing the Charlotte Hornets or you know an offense like the Houston Rockets. The rotations aren't really there, they're a bit step slow, and I think every preseason we do say this. I remember last year we were super excited about the defense, and then you know the first couple of preseason games were like, Yo, this uh, this doesn't really look good. This is this is super unfortunate. But obviously, we had one of the best defenses in NBA history by the end of the year. So I still think we have the athletes and the defenders to defend at a high level this upcoming season. It's just going to take a while to get all the rotations in, get everyone accustomed to their new roles. So that's that's something I'm not going to worry about. I'm not going to talk about a bit, but it certainly has to be addressed because the defense looks really bad right now. It'll be good. That's not something I'm worried about. But uh, yeah, Pascal Siakam, he looks great. You know, he looks like a guy that's ready to take the leap into a, a higher higher role with this team. He had 24 points and he had uh, 20, uh, 16 points in the first couple games. We all have high expectations for Pascal Siakam coming into this year, so I won't, I won't get into him too much. Uh, one player that's really impressed me has been Serge Ibaka. You know, Serge, he's been a guy that we kind of wrote off as a... As a guy that's that's aging, he's in the twilight of his career two seasons ago because he, he looked like a shell of his Oklahoma City self with the Toronto Raptors in his first two seasons. He wasn't horrible, but he certainly wasn't good. Then Nick Nurse switches him to the center position, and last year he has a rejuvenated career. These couple preseason games looks the exact same. You know, he's, he's getting buckets, shooting a high percentage. His post-fade, he had like a Kobe fade in one in the second game of these this back-to-back -back with Houston. So, Serge Ibaka, I'm really encouraged by what I'm seeing with him. I think he's going to have a great year. And honestly, his three-point stroke in the small sample size of uh, two that he's taken, he's shooting 50%. So, <laughs> that, that's just going to be ignored. I think Serge Ibaka, we, we can't really expect him to up his shooting that much but maybe his mid-range looks super clean and it's always been super clean so maybe the threes will be a bit more consistent this year as well Fred Van Vliet with Kyle Lowry out he's looked like a guy that can truly man the starting position something we already knew so I won't talk to death about Fred Van Vliet too much because you know we, we've talked about Fred a lot but yeah so outside of Norm I think the more established players look like kind of what we expected them to come into this season looking like so I won't over over talk about those players too much but the players where this preseason stuff really matters is kind of the fringe players the players fighting for rotation spots and a couple of guys have really impressed uh one player that has really kind of been off the radar completely even though he's been a toronto raptor for basically two years malcolm miller he's coming to these games ready to splash threes ready to take advantage of his opportunities i know he's a player that doesn't excite a lot of raptors fans because outside of three-point shooting 
there's not a lot Malcolm Miller brings to the table, at least from what we've seen. He's a solid defender. Nick Nurse has actually talked about over the past two seasons that Malcolm Miller is an underrated defender. No one really asks questions about Malcolm Miller. He doesn't get a lot of minutes, so we don't really know a lot about his game. But in these couple of uh, matchups versus the Houston Rockets, he's really come out ready to shoot good threes, ready to you know take the smart shots. He doesn't re- hasn't really been rebounding, hasn't really shown extreme defensive capabilities. You know, he's got a couple steals in that second game, but. You know, if he can shoot the ball, if he can come out there and knock down threes, he might surprise some Raptors fans and earn some minutes this year. Uh, Stanley Johnson, Rondé Hollis-Jefferson, two guys. They're names that are known throughout the NBA. You know, people with uh, really strong potentials at one point in their NBA careers, but then, unfortunately, things haven't really gone their way. They've uh, not really shown much for for the Toronto Raptors this preseason. I'm not going to bag on them too much. They're guys that, when they've been successful in the league, it's been within a team offense. You know, they've... They've thrived as role players, rebounders, defenders, and, you know, in preseason, especially where you're not super integrated with the offense, you're not playing with a guy like Kyle Lowry, those those types of players kind of struggle, so I'm not going to overreact to their struggles in this preseason, and same thing with OG Ananobi. OG Ananobi, he's like those two guys, but still with a lot of potential, and his defense looks great, but... You know, the whole team defense has been horrible, so no one's really going to point that out. So we'll we'll judge the defense on everyone later, you know, once the actual season starts and probably 10 games into the regular season. But OG's really struggled as the starting small forward so far in these first two games. And I've seen a lot of people, you know, as as many people overreacting to Norman Powell's 22 and 18 point games or uh, 14 point games, sorry. You know, we've seen the equal amount of people give up on OG after these two games. And I'm not saying that uh, it's bad to overreact to Norman Powell's great, great performances. And I'm not saying it's bad to be a bit worried about uh, OG's struggles in these games. But, you know, we, we want to take everything with a grain of salt. And yes, his handle doesn't look much improved like we were promised from Nick Nurse and all that this offseason. And he still looks a bit just uncomfortable on the basketball court, but he still shows those intangibles to to be a strong player. I think OG is a guy that needs to be in the groove. He needs to be in the rhythm of the game. He probably needs to he needs to get comfortable again. He hasn't played basketball. He's barely played on a consistent basis last year. He's recovering from that uh, ruptured appendix he suffered in the playoffs last year. I think it's going to take time to see OG be integrated, and I don't think the Raptors should give up on him and throw him, you know, hide him in the back of the bench till we see him play. Uh, you know, 10, 15 games, see if he can get comfortable, because he's a guy that if he fulfills even that first year potential, you know, takes a little step forward from that, he's going to be a huge plus for this Raptors team, so yeah, let me know what you think of OG, because I think I think a lot of people have fallen off the bandwagon these couple these past couple games, and I'm someone that's a huge OG and OB fan, so maybe it's a, it's Homer support, but we'll, we'll see, so yeah, those guys, those guys have kind of struggled, Chris Boucher, He's looking like Chris Boucher. He goes out there. He's ready to fire up shots. He's a guy that's not afraid to go out there and get buckets, and he's been capable of doing it. He's been doing it on a very consistent basis, whether it be in garbage time of NBA games or in the G League. So we know the skill set's there for Chris Boucher. And, you know, he the one thing that we've been talking about that his next evolution is to have a dribble, you know, have be able to handle like Pascal Siakam got after his rookie season. You know, and that's why he really thrived at the bench mob in terms of Pascal. If Chris Boucher, which he's kind of shown in these first two games, particularly the first one, if he can show that he has a handle and he's able to dribble the ball up the floor and, you know, as a guy that's more of a shooter and is more slight of framed, that's a skill that he needs to have, and he has all the other intangibles to be a solid NBA contributor. So if that handle is there and we see it utilized on a consistent basis, there's no reason Chris Boucher shouldn't be a full-time rotation player for this Toronto Raptors team. I think he has a better shot than Malcolm Miller, and maybe even after this, these first two games, probably Rondé and Stanley Johnson getting some minutes this season. But let me know what you guys think. And also, before, before I end it off, I can't forget about the the new Toronto Raptors legend. We we said it in the offseason. He's going to be the steal. He's going to be the the next undrafted star. I don't want to overreact or anything, but uh, I think Terrence Davis is going to win six MVP awards in his NBA career. Yeah, you know, he can dribble, he can slash, he can shoot. He looks un- under control when he's on the basketball court. He's everything we want in a backup point guard. And if he doesn't get consistent rotation minutes from the two games that I've seen this preseason, I know he hasn't been super consistent with his jumper, but all the intangibles are there. I'm really hyped to see Terrence Davis get an opportunity. I think he will. You know, the six MVP awards, not an overreaction. I think it's going to happen. <laughs> but let me know what you guys think. How many MVP awards do you think Terrence Davis is going to win? You know, Matt Thomas, he's also a guy that he can shoot. We'll see if he can do anything else. 
uh yeah no there's there's a lot of players to talk about we're going long on this podcast so you're the best for making this far check out the twitter the instagram all that cool stuff if there's any players you want us to get more in depth with you know i talked about norm powell a lot in this podcast let me know in the comment section below you know we have a lot of cool content coming the the regular season's just around the corner so subscribe to the raptors digest tell your friends about the raptors digest we really appreciate your support anyways i'm signing off cheers